Following the finger poke of doom incident in WCW, the New World Order faction went through another change. The NWO Wolfpack and the NWO Black and White had been at war with each other but when Hulk Hogan joined forces with Kevin Nash after the finger poke of doom, the NWO went through a kind of reboot that was supposed to bring the faction back to its glory days. What we got instead was a messy and sometimes confusing reiteration of the groundbreaking group, this time known as is the NWO Elite, or more specifically, the NWO Wolfpack Elite. Today's video will look at the group's entire run, which was thankfully quite short lived, and we'll also take a look at how the NWO era in WCW came to an end. As a heads up, my previous Finger Poke of Doom video would serve as a good introduction to this video, it kind of sets the stage for what was to come. The NWO Elite is a hot mess for sure, but hopefully by the end of this upload, you'll understand understand why this version of the New World Order spelled the end of an era for WCW. Our story begins then on WCW Thunder, January 7th 1999, the episode after the infamous finger poke of doom. Tony Schiavone, Bobby Heenan and Mike Tanay kicked the show off by calling Hogan and Nash's actions on Nitro appalling and the World Heavyweight Championship had been disgraced. WCW kayfabe president Ric Flair came to the ring and he sent a message to Kevin Nash. Flair said in 10 years time Nash will have to look at his kid and he'll have to tell the story story of how he lay down in the middle of the ring for Hulk Hogan. Flair says that he knows who Hulk Hogan is. Flair was destined to walk behind Hogan since the day the Hulkster walked into WCW and the Nature Boy takes a jab at the Hulkster by naming guys like Dory Funk Jr, Jack Briscoe, Dusty Rhodes, Ronnie Garvin, Terry Funk and Harley Race as true champions of wrestling. Hogan and Nash are going to pay the price, we just had to wait and see how the Nature Boy was going to go about it. Members of the NWO Black and White were waiting for the arrival of Hulk Hogan backstage. Keep in mind that Scott Steiner had been the leader of NWO Hollywood during Hogan's absence and Steiner had also sided with Kevin Nash after the finger poke of doom, so no one knew what was going on here with the New World Order. Were they still at war with each other? Were Hogan and Steiner now Wolfpack members? Hogan showed up wearing, well, wearing this and he was also wearing the Wolfpack colours. Scott Steiner, Scott Hall, Buff Bagwell, Lex Luger and Kevin Nash were also wearing red and black. The Giant approached Hogan asking what was going on. Hogan said he would address the state of the NWO in the ring and he asked the black and white to watch his back backstage. NWO Hollywood agreed. Later in the show, the LWO Psychosis had a match with Billy Kidman and after the Latino World Order showed up, the Wolfpack made an appearance. Psychosis and Juventud Guerrera got the LWO shirts ripped off their backs as Kevin Nash grabbed the microphone. Big Sexy said he couldn't believe that Ric Flair would speak badly about the classic Hogan vs Nash match that took place on Nitro. Hogan says that the has-been world champions of WCW couldn't face facts. The NWO Wolfpack had set a new standard and the Wolfpack now runs the show. Just then, the NWO Black and White showed up and the Giant wanted answers. The Giant said that the Wolfpack left the Black and White backstage while this beatdown of the LWO took place and the Giant feels like the Black and White are playing second fiddle to Hogan and the Wolfpack. Hogan said that he's cool with the Black and White but he's not cool with the Giant calling him out in the middle of the ring. The Hulkster says that the NWO are trimming the fat and there's only room for one Giant in the faction, claiming that Kevin Nash is the true big man of the New World Order. And so a match was booked for Nitro the following week. If the Giant can beat Kevin Nash, Nash, then the Giant can take Nash's spot in the NWO. So yeah, it's a mess here, but at the same time, this all sounds very familiar. There's guys wearing red and black, guys wearing black and white, Hogan is claiming there's no divide in the NWO, yet the Wolfpack is still used as a faction name. There's supposed to be unity, but the Giant is facing Kevin Nash on Nitro. There's more questions than answers. 
On the following episode of Nitro, Hulk Hogan and the Wolfpack showed up in a limousine along with the Hells Angels, and once again, the NWO Black and White were left out. Hogan tries to tell Scott Norton that the whole group was supposed to arrive together and there was some sort of timing issue, but the guys don't buy it. What you're seeing here, this whole thing with the NWO Black and White getting treated like lesser members of the faction, this would pretty much remain intact throughout this NWO Elite run. Guys were Wearing the white and black shirts would become known as the NWOB team, basically they were the mid to lower card players of the New World Order, a group of guys who nobody really cared about, including WCW management. Anyway, Hogan gets into the ring and he says he'll take on anyone, Nash says he'll prove he's the real giant in the main event, really there's nothing special going on. Kevin Nash won his match later in the evening and so the giant was kicked out of the New World Order. Earlier in the evening, Conan was kicked out of the Wolfpack too when he tried to defend Rey Mysterio from Lex Luger. And you may be wondering where Sting was during all of this. Remember Sting was a member of the Wolfpack but unfortunately Sting was out with an injury and he missed out on all of this. On the January 25th episode of Nitro, the show opened up with NWO Black and White members Kurt Hennig and Stevie Ray discussing the NWO Elite. Kurt says that Nash and Hogan are trying to push the Black and White away, and Stevie agrees. Stevie and Kurt talk to the other members of the B team, and Stevie Ray announces that he's going to talk to Hulk Hogan about the problems within the New World Order. When the NWO Elite arrived in their private jet, Stevie Ray ran to Hulk Hogan and he said that Kurt Hennig had refused to put on his NWO colours. The NWO Elite and the NWO B team then gave Kurt Hennig a beating and Kurt was kicked out of the NWO. Stevie Ray thought this would have been enough to secure him a little bit of status within the NWO Elite, but instead he was thrown right back into the black and white team having to catch a ride with Vincent instead of riding in a limousine with Hulk Hogan. At least there was a little sense being shown here, removing members of the New World Order was absolutely necessary and I'm surprised there was an NWOB team at all, the minor leagues of the New World Order served no purpose whatsoever. While simultaneously working out all these issues among themselves, the NWO's main rivals inside the ring were the Four Horsemen and Bill Goldberg. Kevin Nash stated in interviews that the NWO Elite's main purpose in WCW was to have a faction that Goldberg could destroy over an extended period of time. But like most things in WCW during this time period, long term booking plans quickly went down the toilet. The NWO B team continued to feel like second class citizens in comparison to the elite, while the elite began seeing the black and white NWO as more of a hindrance than anything else. You may be thinking to yourself that this was all leading to something, but let me just ruin it for you, it didn't. The February 8th episode of Nitro saw Hulk Hogan approaching separate NWO black and white members and telling each one that they were the leader of the B team, and two weeks later every member of the black and white claimed to be the leader while they argued among themselves. This went on for weeks before finally Stevie Ray became the leader. Stevie Ray won a bottle royal that featured other NWO B team members, making him one of the more unremarkable leaders of the New World Order. Let's go back then and refocus on the Elite, because really, you don't need to know anything else about the NWO Black and White. Hogan's first title defence after the finger poke of doom was against Roddy Piper on the February 15th episode of Nitro. Piper won via DQ when Scott Hall interfered. Later in the week at Super Brawl 9, the nature boy Ric Flair squared off with the Hulkster once again on WCW television, and the world title was on the line. The match ended when a masked man came to the ring and tasted. Rick Flair, Hulk Hogan got the pinfall win, and the masked man was revealed to be none other than David Flair, Rick's son. Absolutely nobody cared about this revelation. The audience didn't boo, they didn't cheer, they just didn't care. David also looked incredibly out of place as a member of the NWO, and I know it's not like you needed to be a high caliber superstar to join the New World Order as evidenced by some of the guys who were already in the group, but David Flair made some of the NWO 
WOB team members look like absolute superstars. And what's more, David was wearing the Wolfpack Elite colours. In saying that, Disco Inferno was also a member of the Red and Black, and many people felt that he didn't belong either. Remember what I said earlier about how it was good that the NWO had gotten rid of some members? Well, yeah, they were all replaced. Ric Flair challenged Hulk Hogan to a steel cage match at Uncensored 99 for the world title. At the pay-per-view, Hogan dropped the title and Flair became a 14-time world champion. It was another match filled with Hulk Hogan nonsense, that old he beat me but he didn't really beat me stuff that Hogan played near every time he had to drop the belt. The match was supposed to be a first blood cage match, no pinfalls of course, and even though Hogan tried to pin Flair numerous times, Charles Robinson wouldn't count Flair's shoulders to the mat naturally. But Flair won the match with a fast three count, even though both men were already busted open. And so, just like Starcade 97, it looked like Hogan got ripped off. It was more of the Hulk Hogan bullshit that continued to tarnish the reputation of both the main event scene and the World Heavyweight title, and fans were now getting fed up with it. The same thing happened the next night on Nitro during a tag team match. Charles Robinson simply refused to count Flair's shoulders to the mat during a tag team match. Scott Steiner and Buff Bagwell then had a falling out, so we have some infighting going on with the NWO Elite. Where have we seen this before? It looked like we were going to see another feud between Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan as evidenced on the March 29th, 99 episode of Nitro. Hulk Hogan was seen talking to Tori Wilson and the Hulkster said that he could beat Kevin Nash again if he wanted to. We wouldn't find out what was really supposed to happen though as Hulk Hogan got injured at the next pay-per-view, an injury that's still debated to this day because, well, it's Hulk Hogan. The man called Sting made his WCW return on the 5th of April April 99, he was no longer affiliated with the Wolfpack, and it was announced that Sting would get a shot at Ric Flair's WCW title along with Diamond Dallas Page and Hulk Hogan. A Four Corners match was set up at Spring Stampede 99, one of WCW's last really good pay-per-views, and whoever won the match would be crowned the new heavyweight champion. Diamond Dallas Page got the win, but during the match, Page put Hogan in a figure four around the ring post, leading to Hogan being being unable to continue the match. In my opinion, Hogan knew he needed to have surgery and this was used to write him off TV for a while. It would also explain why the main event was a fatal four-way match and it also explains why Hogan had nothing but tag team matches since the uncensored cage bout. Also at Spring Stampede, Goldberg got revenge on Kevin Nash by beating him in a singles match and Disco Inferno also had his last match as a member of the NWO. Clearly, things were falling apart. Part. Scott Hall suffered a food injury that put him on the bench until October, Buff Bagwell and Scott Steiner were fighting among each other, and Big Papa Pump would soon end up sidelined with a back injury, Lex Luger had suffered a bicep injury that would keep him out of in-ring competition until September, and now Hulk Hogan was taking a break. In terms of big name superstars, all that was really left was Kevin Nash, which is quite ironic seeing as Nash gets labelled as injury prone. With Luger, Hogan, Hall and eventually Scott Steiner all out with injuries, the future of the NWO looked seriously bleak. There was of course the NWO B team, but the Wolfpack had done an incredible job in making the B team look like mid-carters that it would have been ridiculous to raise these guys up into the main event. In storyline, Kevin Nash blamed Diamond Dallas Page, the WCW champion, for putting Hogan out of action. A title match was booked for Slambury, Big Sexy vs DDP, and Kevin Nash won the match. Being 1999 WCW, the win wasn't without controversy. Macho Man Randy Savage interfered in the match and originally Nash won via disqualification. Eric Bischoff restarted the bout and Nash ultimately picked up the title after delivering the jackknife powerbomb. As the weeks went on, then, the NWO Wolfpack became a memory, the only holdover being the fact that Kevin Nash would still come out to the Wolfpack theme music. The NWO B team would still get featured on TV, but they too began to slowly distance themselves from the NWO name. It seemed like WCW was now free from the New World Order, but still, the television ratings continued to drop. 
Kevin Nash dropped the WCW title at Bash at the Beach in July in a tag team match. Nash teamed up with Sting to take on Sid Vicious and Randy Savage, and because Savage got the pinfall victory over Nash, the Macho Man became the new WCW champion. The very next night, Hulk Hogan made his return to WCW, and the Hulkster was wearing an NWO shirt. The Hulkster accepted an open challenge from Randy Savage for the world title. Kevin Nash, wearing an outsider shirt, helped Hogan win the WCW champion later in the evening. So yes, Hogan came back from injury and he reclaimed his WCW title on his very first night back in the company. This wasn't an NWO reunion however, after the match Kevin Nash told Hogan that he wants him in the ring and he wants to win the title from Hogan. The Kevin Nash vs Hulk Hogan match wasn't something that WCW had tapped into yet, at least not without finger pokes and all that nonsense. So the next week Kevin Nash aligned himself with Rick Steiner and Sid vicious and a match between Hogan and Nash was made official for Road Wild 99, a WCW championship match where the loser would be forced into retirement. On the August 9th episode of Nitro, Nash, Sid and Rick Steiner were scheduled to take on Goldberg, Hogan and Sting, and Hogan's American Made theme played in the arena as the audience wondered what was going on. Out walked Hulk Hogan, once again wearing the red and yellow attire for the first time since 1996. At the Road Wild pay-per-view, Hogan successfully retained the world title, meaning Kevin Nash had to retire. This being wrestling, the retirement didn't last long. Hogan dropped the WCW title to Sting at Fall Brawl 99. The Stinger turned heel at the end of the match by using a baseball bat against good guy Hulk Hogan. Sting also had help from Sid Vicious, Lex Luger and Diamond Dallas Page, so it's as far away from a clean finish as humanly possible. During the same time period, WCW was going through some big changes backstage. Eric Bischoff was getting phased out while Vince Russo was getting brought in, and Russo felt that Hulk Hogan should take a break from WCW and apparently no time frame was given to Hogan in regards to his return. In Hogan's book, which I know isn't a great source, Hogan said he had reservations about taking time off but he eventually agreed to do so. In a fan example of Vince Russo's booking style, Hogan showed up at Halloween Havoc 99 to face Sting for the world title, only Hogan lay down in the middle of the ring, allowing the Stinger to pin Hulk and successfully retain the title. There's been many different reasons given as to why this happened. A common theory is that Russo wanted Hogan to lose in under a minute, but Hogan refused, preferring to lay down in the ring instead. Another theory is that this was done to repackage Hulk in the future for a feud with the powers that be in WCW. Who knows? People seem to dismiss Hogan's creative control clause here, and I'm not sure why. It's to my understanding that Hogan could legally say he didn't want to do the match if he didn't want to do the match, but it really doesn't matter. The end result was another slap in the face to WCW fans who paid for a ticket to see Hogan vs Sting. That's going to do it for today because the next phase of the NWO has already been covered. NWO 2000 is on the channel and I'll leave a link at the end of the video for you to check out. Truly though, the NWO's glory days in the company were completely gone by the time the NWO Elite was formed. Initially, fans stuck around to see how it would all pan out, but by April of 99, less and less viewers began tuning into Nitro as the NWO infighting became more and more confusing. WCW, to their credit, did try a few new things, such as putting the title on Diamond Dallas Page, but in typical WCW fashion, they reverted right back and things became familiar again, for example another Hogan vs Savage rivalry. Vince Russo tried to revive the New World Order with NWO 2000, but the true era of the New World Order dominating WCW Nitro was now completely over. The NWO 2000 was never going to recapture the feeling of a hostile takeover, and the NWO 2000 was never going to bring back those viewers who switched over to Raw. Things would get even more strange for Hulk Hogan and WCW after Halloween Havoc, and next time we'll look at Hogan's exit from World Championship Wrestling along with the infamous Bash at the Beach 2000 incident. Thank you for watching.